Uh, can you speak up now? Hello. Ah, uh, yeah, it's okay now. Can you tell me what was our last topic? Hello? Hello. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, are you able to hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. What was our last topic? It was. Oh, it you? was the e Yeah. Okay. The thing is, I'm using a different laptop, so I don't have any old setup. Okay. Uh, if else condition we have done, right? Only if else. Let's yeah. get with the study. Mm -hmm. Uh, create a new notepad for you. Yes. Simply done. If fails done. Last COVID. Last if. Uh, next if. Product. Then we will go for loops. For loop, while, do while. Then switch. Return. Break. Continue. So I just listed all the control structures available in Java. And we will go with nested if now. <laughs> so nested if syntax. It is something like if condition. Here goes block of statements. Statement one. Statement two. Statement three. And so on. So here you can write another if condition. So my first if condition will be having a boolean expression, which may evaluate to either true or false. So boolean expression one I say. And here goes again the statement block. So here the thing is, Boolean expression 1, if it is evaluating to true, then the JVM gets into this block. Execute statement by statement like this, and it encounters Boolean expression 2. If this Boolean expression 2 is true, then it gets into this. So like this. So if the first condition is true, then it gets into the if condition block. If second condition is true, then it gets into the second if condition and so on like this. If first condition is false, then 
the block will not be executed and it comes out whatever the statement present after that will be executed even if a first condition is true gvm gets into the block if second condition is false then in that case gvm comes out here and if there are any statements it executes here then the statement in from first block then comes out so the statement next will be executed irrespective of boolean expression 1 2 either true or false let me write so I created a new project here I am adding a class here class title and the package name What I'll do is I'm declaring int i with some value 100. Then into j with value 200. I'm writing in this condition the first if condition. If i value equals to 100, you can see over there double equals to I'm using for comparison of two values. If i value is equals to 100, then I am going to display student out dot print and then the i value is 100. Then inside the if condition. I'm going to check whether j value is 200 or not. j value equals to 200. In that case, if it is true, the j value is 200. So I just came out of the first if condition. I will write here out that print and then simple message after if condition just to show you that this statement after if condition will be executed irrespective of the condition in if uh, leading to true or false I'm executing this So you can see here, yes, the i value is 100 and j value is 200. This after if condition is executing. Suppose if I say i value is 101, actually i value is 100. It means the first condition will not get satisfied. In that case, the these two statements will not be executed. So you can see. So the statement after if condition is getting displayed. Suppose the first condition is true and second condition is false assume. I just change it to 201. 
Now what happens? I value is 100. So 100 equals to 100. Then this statement is printed. Then G value is 200 and I am combining with 201 which it does not satisfy. It means this statement J value is 200 will not be displayed. Of course this will be displayed. Yes. So when the I value is 100 and the after if condition are getting displayed. So you need to understand that the first condition if it is true only then the second condition will be evaluated. If you want, you can mention more number of uh, if conditions in another if also, let's check ifs. So, first condition is true, then second condition gets executed. If second condition is true, then third condition gets executed. Like this, it goes on. That's about nested if condition. And I'll take you towards Next, if else if ladder. So here also it is similar. So let me copy paste this side. And I'll change accordingly. So here first a Boolean expression. And there is a statement block. What I'll do is statement block, and here goes else block. If else, statement block here. In this statement block. Can mention another if condition here. Here, Boolean expression two. I'll remove this statement block just to avoid confusion. Yes, Boolean expression 2. Suppose Boolean expression 2 is false, then it gets into else block. And inside this else block, another condition. Like this, you can put n number of if conditions in the else block. So here, how the execution goes is, if the first condition is failing, then else block gets executed. In the else block, if the second condition is failing, then this else block gets executed. So like this, it goes on. So it is just opposite to the first uh, nested if condition which we have seen. The nested if condition, if the Boolean expression is true, only then the second condition is get executed. Whereas here, if it is false, then the other condition gets executed. If that is false, the other condition gets executed. So this is how it goes. So I'm writing an example here. Class. It looks like a ladder, so we name it as ladder, if else if ladder. Main method. So what I'm doing is my program will uh, award grading for students based upon the average of their marks. It is Awarding grade somewhere like if the average and grade if the average is greater than or equal to 75 
I say distribution. If the average is greater than 60, greater than or equals to 60, and less than, less than 75, that is something like first class. Similarly, I just copy paste it. So, if the average is greater than 50 and less than 60, and the grade is second class, similarly. It is greater than 40 and less than 50. Third class. And if it is less than greater than 0 and less than 40, it is something like I am displaying the grade of students based upon the sum of three subjects. So I say into subject one equals to some marks. Into subject two equals to twenty seven. Subject three equals to seventy eight. I find the average, so average equals to total by the number of subject is 3 for us. So I need total first. So I declare total equals to subject 1, subject 2, subject 3. Then I find the average. So average is total by 3. So when integer is divided by a number, the result would be float actually. So I make it a float average. So I got that average. So here I'm going to write the program. If this average is greater than or equal to 75 I need to display distinction else if the average falls in the range 60 to 75 else if average is greater than 60 this is logical and and average is less than 75. Let me write average greater than or equals to 60. Even if it is 60, it is first class. Suppose if it does not fall in the range, then else. So I'm just copy pasting this average. So if the average is greater than 50, greater than or equals to 50 and less than 60, it is second class. I'm just copy pasting this statement. Suppose no, then it gets in the else block.
So here the same average greater than 40 and less than 50. So I copy this. Paste here. Average is greater than 40 and less than 50. Third class. If not, then if not again, the average five average. same average less than 40 if it is then fail. Yes, I'm done. I'll save this program and if you observe the average for this is 77. So it will display distinction. Of course distinction. Now I'm changing the average to 70 that is 60. 60. So, which is first class actually? Of course, first class you can see. So, similarly, it will display second, third class, and uh, I will try with less than 30, less than 40. So this uh, average is 35, which means fail. So fail you can see. Then, so that's the thing. Here, this part, I would like to simplify this part, this part. If you see, the average, if it is falling in the above ranges, it is distinction first class, second class, third class and else suppose if it is not falling in the above range it is obviously fail. So you can directly write SOP statement in else block that is also valid. I re-execute this of course you can see I don't need to check the condition here because obviously that is the range that is left by our program. So if the average is falling in that, then display fail. So I just commented out this to simplify the logic. And second thing is the condition here. You can see two comparisons are reduced in your program. So that performance would be higher. So that's about if else if ladder demo. Similarly, I'll show you some tutorial I believe I have made programs related to this to you maybe for loop all those things PDFs did you check your email yes uh, we got all your email I mean, the control structures PDFs and all. control structures right yeah so I want you to execute those programs can you Okay, I will execute and get back to you. Right, right, right. Maybe by tomorrow's session, I want you to complete the execution. All right. Okay. Okay. Then okay. in that case, I believe these control structures are familiar to you, right? Because you might have seen in C programming as well. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll just explain that here and you try executing in the samples, okay? Let me open that. So what I'll do is, I'm opening the PDF. I 
So Java loops for loop, while loop do while loop. So let me take you to for loop first. Mm, for loop. So for loop would be having initialization, boolean expression, update. So first initialization gets executed and after initialization the values are cross-checked like an boolean. Then if it is true, then execute this block of statements. Then go right here and update. So here you can see my for loop it is displaying numbers from 10 to 19. So x is being initialized to 10, x less than 20 and x is updated by 1. So x equals to x plus 1. So here the value of x then we are going to display. So here if you observe for the first time x gets a value 10 and 10 is less than 20. Yes of course it's true. So my x value gets printed here 10. You can see 10 gets printed. Then 10 becomes 11 and then 11 is less than 20. Yes. Then it prints 11. Like this it's so on till it prints 19, 19 and then you can see 19 becomes 20 here, x equals to x plus 1. Then 20 less than 20, it's false. So the loop breaks and comes out. So this is how the for loop gets executed. Then while loop, so while loop syntax is while boolean expression so that boolean expression may be true or false if it is true execute this block and this block will be executed continuously until this boolean expression is false once it is false then loop comes out so here you can see with the main method here x is assigned a value 10 and we are checking if 10 is less than 20 then display it and observe here update of the loop is going here incrementation or decrementation based upon your logic so after incrementation this will print a new line character that's it slasher so like this it goes on once the value is 19 look there 19 19 being displayed then 19 gets updated to 20 x plus plus 20 less than 20 fails and it comes out so this is how while loop gets executed Similarly, you do while loop, what happens is there is a block of statements first, do, that is this block. After that, you execute this. So it is something like whether the condition is false or true, the block gets executed at least once. That is the difference between while and do while. So here you can see x value 10, then do this block. Print the text value 10, then increment it by 1, then new line then check it. So after incrementation that is 11 less than 20. Yeah. Then it gets again this block. This block gets executed. So it prints till 19 I show. So x value is 19 printed. Then 19 becomes 20 with next statement. And then a new line printed. Then 20 less than 20 which fails. And the block also is terminated. So this is how the do while loop executes. So the basic difference between for loop and the while loop is for loop you will be using generally when you know that uh, you would like you would be iterating through a loop for a fixed number of times, maybe 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, define a number of times. If you don't know how many times you are getting it iterated. Then in that case, go for while loop. And the difference between while loop and do while is, while loop is known as entry control loop. So here, while loop, at the entry point of the loop itself, the Boolean check is evaluated. 
if it is true only the block gets executed if it is false no whereas do while is known as exit control loop so the block gets executed irrespective of the condition whether it is true or false so after block execution for at least one time then boolean expression is evaluated if it is false then the block will not further get executed so that's about do while uh, are you okay with these loops yeah yeah right then i want you to execute these programs and there is switch let me explain switch decision making we call it as so here there is a flow chart of switch um, just a minute decision very switch my ah the switch expression under the expression is getting evaluated to some number if that number matches with value 1 then execute this block then break me terminate that block if that value is not matching with this first value then it compares with second value if it is second value execute the block then come out like this it goes on and evaluate i mean evaluate against each value If suppose if no value is matched with the expression result, then the default block gets executed. So here you can see. So I'm just printing grade value. If it is A, then excellent. If it is B or C, well done. If it is D, then you pass. If it is F, better try equal. Look there. We initialized a value with C character and switch. And evaluate that grade. If this I mean, grade C, I mean switch C it is. So case A is not equal to C, so this now will not get executed. Here case B gets executed, and here case B what happens is case B is not equal to C. No, then case C comes here. C equals to C, so it prints well done and breaks the loop. If you observe over there for case B and case C. the statement block is only one it means the expression value if it is b or c it displays well done that's what it means is uh, this is uh, a new construct maybe from java 6 or 7 version it was implemented that is case statement without a block so similarly if nothing is matched then default gets executed so i want you to try with the grade a b c d R Z to check the result given by this program. Fine. Then the thing is, uh, for now I am winding up the session because I am late to my office, and we shall meet tomorrow. And I am expecting you to execute these samples by tomorrow. And if you face any difficulty, I'll help you out. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Fine. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.